Yo, what is going on everybody? K-Man Jack, back for another album reaction slash review. And we are back live from the studio. studio. Yo. Yo, hopefully you guys are having a lovely week. On this week's album reaction, we are listening to a star that was taken from us too soon. An artist that I've been meaning to check out for quite some time, Amy Winehouse. Now, this is an artist that I don't really know a lot about. Uh, I will admit that. Uh, I know she worked with Mark Ronson. I know she had an incredible, unique sound. The music world was really shattered when they found out she had passed, but the legacy she leaves behind with her music is, uh, from what I've heard, is something else. The album I've decided to listen to today is Back to Black, uh, which was released in 2006. Apple Music has the genre down as R&B and soul. Uh, I can't lie. I think I've heard Rehab. Um, I've heard bits of back to black i don't think i've listened to the full song properly with headphones and really kind of sat down taking it in um but i'm really excited to dive into this uh, this project uh she's a legend uh, a lot of people love this album and i'm just keen to just dive into it and just just check it out for the first time yeah this is a classic song yes i've been I like her tone and her voice as well. I like how the instrumentation isn't taking too much away from her voice. There's like choir bells there, wedding bells. Even like the kind of horns as well. Free flow on that piano. Get Western that Western Saloon. It's not just my pride. It's just till these tears had dried. You're trying to make me go to rehab, but I say no, no, no. Man, the instrumentation on that track really is fantastic, and it does a really great job at ensuring that it puts Amy's voice on a pedestal in a way that it, it feels quite connected to her voice uh, in a manner that it really just highlights it. And, um, yeah, you don't want to take anything away from Amy's voice because it's so unique and distinct. And the way she kind of flows on that song is very kind of R&B, very soul-like. It's a very catchy song as well. That chorus hits, and, and you can't help but sing along to it. It's playful, uh, also kind of wrestling the ideas of kind of like she knows she's in a bad state when it's like, you know, like I ain't got the time, you know, and if my dad thinks I'm fine, you know, whatever, I should be sweet. Uh, when a lot of people kind of think of her biggest hits, uh, this is definitely up there for them. And this is a track that I have heard. Uh, I remember it was on Glee. It's crazy how many tracks in Glee I heard for the first time. Look at that bass.
lot of horns on this album so far. I'm really loving it. I don't hear a lot of horns in the music I listen to. Sweet reunion, Jamaica and Spain. Oh, the we like good. how we were again. Loving the soul. You can really feel the soul on both these tracks and how she flows and the sounds. Those horns, man. Very um Yeah, very soulful. A lot of the instrumentation. Uh she sounds great. Uh, like I said, she's got a distinct voice and a real charisma to it. On that one, you know I'm no good. It's like she keeps getting caught doing these uh kind of just sneaking around and um yeah, the guy just like shrugs it off and uh, they both kind of keep having this toxic, you know, they both know what each other does, but they just, you know, they just keep going and keep going on with it. So the closest thing I've heard to this is her voice at times sounds a bit like Adele. Um, now, obviously, I haven't listened to a lot of this soulful sound, but there's points on some of the Adele records where um, she kind of has this kind of swagger. Me and Mr. No Jones. Like, listen to that soul, me man. Feel the heart. Me and Mr. Jones. Me and Mr. Jones. What kind of fuckery is this? You made me Mr. Slick Wicked. Oh, listen to this, man. It's like I we're in the 60s. Raspiness in her voice. Even the harmony sounds very like 60s. that constant piano and once again the horns so much like character short and tight song that one me and mr jones once again her voice has so much charisma to it, and it's this type of soulful sound I haven't listened to a lot of in my life, so it feels really refreshing, something different and uh, really unique for me. And uh, I loved how like it sounded very sixties like, um, just kind of like a saloon almost. Uh, the piano was very saloon like, how it just kind of is a little bit out of tune. Uh, what I really like about Amy's voice as well is it sounds really real and authentic because it got, got quite a quite a lot of dynamics to it. It's quite raspy at times. Uh, shows a lot of maturity and experience in her voice. And I think it comes across really nicely uh, when you're listening to it because the instrumentation, the producer has allowed the instrumentation to really, like I said in the first track, Rehab, to really highlight her voice and, and not take away any of the authenticity that she displays when she's singing. So it's whoever produced it. I don't know if Mark Ronson did the whole thing, uh, but whoever, the hands that made this album, they've crafted it in a way that really pays homage to some of the old soulful sounds of yesteryear, while some of the lyricism and some of the uh, kind of flow sounds uh, a little bit more current. So it's a really cool hybrid of a couple of eras. So as I was going through editing this reaction, I was going through the track list and um, I was like, wait a minute, did I miss a song? <laughs> I did. I missed the song Just Friends. So, a bit awkward, I don't know how that happened, but I decided to have a quick listen then and just kind of give my quick thoughts. 
I think it starts very ballad-like. It feels like you're going to go into a bit of a ballad. And then that real beachy kind of vibe starts to come into play. And it was quite nice. I think it was a, a little bit of a different kind of tone. I don't think we had that beachy kind of sound on the album up to that point. Um, again, she's kind of addressing the idea of kind of sneaking around again uh, with someone. When can we be just friends? Um, can we ever be just friends? Um, and this person that she's seeing seems to have someone else already in their life. So it's kind of addressing that sneaking around side again. Um, I liked how the horns had that beachy feel to them as well. Once again, the horns are so prevalent. And finally, the outro there as well. I like how the song kind of played itself out pretty nicely. I didn't do too much uh, from a lyric point of view in the last minute or so, just to kind of give that sound uh, and the outro a bit more time to breathe. Uh, but yeah, Just Friends is a nice track and just continues to add to this kind of soulful feeling. But like I said in the previous track, it feels like a hybrid of different eras of soul and uh, kind of it works really nicely. And for someone who hadn't really listened to much of that sound, it was super refreshing. And, and yeah, but let's get back to the video. Yeah, this is another massive track, man. This is another hit that a lot of people think of when they go to Amy Winehouse's music. Keen to hear it with proper headphones. instrumentation so just effective just really well done really tasteful Fantastic song. Shout out to Amy Winehouse, man. It's a phenomenal song. It's just a great track with a huge range of really effective instrumentation to really capitalize on the real kind of somber, ballad-like I don't know, toxicity that feels like it just plagues that track and how she, it's very bittersweet sound. Her dynamics and the depths that she can reach in her voice and, and in her vocal tracks really helps capture a level of warmness and really helps sell the story and the messages in these songs. Yeah, fantastic song, man. I'll tell you, fantastic song. And now 
I found the instrumentation has been pretty simple here. Effective sounds, but the mix isn't too oversaturated. Just gives us a lot of time to just enjoy her singing, enjoy the story. Beautiful track, so much heart in her voice. All I can ever be to you is the darkness that we know, and this regret Ooh. I got accustomed to. Once it was the right oh when we God. were at our high, waiting for you in the hotel at night. I knew I had him at my match, but every moment we could snatch, I don't know why I got so attached. He walks away. so much soul and every time I have heard soul it just creates such a great feeling inside it just fills you up and I know it, this, it's pretty self-explanatory soul it's just got so much character and life and the instrumentation is so bubbly at times and some of the lyrics are a little bit more sadder but they kind of masked by this more upbeat sound at times but the horns like I said earlier I don't hear a lot of horns in the music I've listened to. And so whenever I do hear a rich array of them, it's, and you as well as I have on this album, I'm just going, okay, okay, a little bit more of this is great. Oh man, that's got the real kind of swoony, little ballad like, man. It's okay in the day. Feels. My soul sick of crying So just lately When I catch myself I do a 180 Soon as the sun sets oh, It's really setting the scene really nicely He's fiercing my dreams, seizing my thoughts He, he floods me with dread So consoling He swims in my Able 
also just set this scene on this song so well. Like you can close your eyes and really feel like you were there. And I think it's got a lot to do with her voice. Uh, and the and the patience and the delivery as well. And the way that she holds certain notes, certain lines, it all plays a part. these tracks well most of them have been really tight uh in terms of song length and mo- like a bunch of them have been sitting around two and a half minutes uh, quite punchy like get to the point um and then you've got like the scene setting pieces which settle at around like three and a half minutes to four minutes um so we're moving through the album fairly quickly i also notice it's not a huge uh a huge amount of tracks not a super long album it's very concise very efficient and uh, you move through it really smoothly. about this song for those who know Arlo Parks another fantastic soulful singer really getting that vibe on this song yeah the instrumentation was really kind of joyous and really upbeat on this one joy going through this project guys i've loved it
incredibly tight album. Uh, that felt like we flew through that album. It was just awesome to sit down and and learn about Amy Winehouse and and hear her music properly for the first time it was, you know, well overdue for me. She's been an artist that has been talked about for a really long time, and and yeah, her music will be timeless. Like a bunch of these tracks just flowed really nicely. I think it's a thirty five minutes. You are yeah, it's a, it's a pretty nice album to just chuck on. You can kind of just move through it fairly fairly quickly. And you're kind of getting a pretty upbeat feel to it. Like, I can't lie, like it's been a pretty long day. So uh, putting this one on, it instantly lifted my moods and kind of woke me up. And, uh, you know, that's the power of music. Sometimes it just it just fills you up with life. And, and we go back to that point about it, you know, being very soulful and uh, a lot of soul sounds and pays tribute to a lot of uh, eras of soul. And uh, soul music can really lift your spirits and it can really be quite uh, emotive and, and really just kind of fill you up with these different feelings and, and kind of just get you up and about. Like uh, a bunch of the sounds, her voice, uh, I cannot understate how just amazing her the dynamics in her vocals were uh, throughout the whole album. Just really had a lot of character. That last one there, Addicted, there was times where uh, the mix, and I don't, it could just be the mix I'm listening to, the headphones, it could be any of those things. So, um, But it sounded a bit disjointed. Her voice was a little bit behind the mix. And uh, I think for the most part, when the tracks, when she her voice is on complete display, that's the ones that really hit me. Yeah, her music is going to be timeless. Uh, and, you know, people like me in 2023 are finally sitting down listening to it. And uh, there'll be plenty more people like me that, that stop and check out this album because it's a timeless piece. Um, and, yeah, I really feel the soulful vibes that she kind of celebrates and empowers on this project. But that was Back to Black by Amy Winehouse. Just an incredible fun project to go through tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Let me know what your favorite track of this album is. Um, but yeah, rest in peace, Amy Winehouse, and, and thank you for creating this awesome album. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, feel free to hit the subscribe button and join the community. We listen to a wide range of music on the channel, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Uh, my name is Caveman Jack. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic rest of your week. Take care, and I will see y'all in the next video. Cheers.